Welcome back to Bots and Thoughts, the hyper automation podcast sponsored by Salient Process. I'm your host, Jimmy Hewitt, aka Mr. Automation. This is episode four, What Do I Automate Next? The reason we've prioritized this episode for you listeners is because it's not only one of the most common questions that directors of intelligent automation and hyper automation practitioners ask themselves, but it also begs a few considerations across a couple of dimensions. As far as episode structure goes, we'll start by establishing two guiding principles at the outset and then get into two considerations and what they mean in the context of deciding what do I automate next. Let's jump in. Guiding principles were not available to the earliest adopters of hyperautomation practitioners. So to give credit where credit's due, thank you to the early adopters, because your efforts to date have given this hyperautomation community two guiding principles that we all can benefit from. First up, find the balance between innovation slash experimentation and governance. Allow me to explain. We know that too much red tape can stifle innovation projects, which is bad, but also that a lack of governance, period, can lead an upcoming hyperautomation team awry. This is also bad. Therefore, guiding principle number one is find the balance between innovation slash experimentation and governance. But what does this look like in practice? The answer is find and build a quick win quickly. If done with just enough governance at this early adopter stage, focusing on and building a quick win can lead to what we call the can we automate this, can we automate that effect, meaning a quick win leads to inbound requests for more of what you've done, which leads to the establishment of evaluation slash prioritization criteria and better governance. On the flip side, by not focusing on a quick win, biting off more than we can chew, trying to end world hunger or (laughs) trying to boil the ocean can delay, stall, and even kill a hyperautomation journey before it sees any success. One example of biting off more than a quick win would be attempting a multi-component hyperautomation, like combining RPA with workflow and capture. This is very much so the end game of hyperautomation, but would not be considered a quick win. So there you have it. Guiding principle number one, find the balance between innovation slash experimentation and governance to achieve momentum and a quick win. The second guiding principle is use evaluation slash prioritization criteria. Let's split this guiding principle into two buckets. One bucket is for evaluating your first automation. The second bucket is for your second and beyond. The reason we're splitting these into two buckets is to adhere to guiding principle number one, and you'll see why. Building your first bot should be done in the spirit of innovation and experimentation. Is this for us? Can we, our customers, employees, and bottom line, benefit from hyperautomation. This early stage checklist is more simple than the next, and what you want to look for are some or all of the following five checklist items. Number one, is this work item or task relatively repeatable and or root? A good example of this would be moving information between applications or spreadsheets. Checklist item number two is kind of obvious, but is this work item or task being done manually today? Meaning, via copy and paste, or even worse, manually keying in information. Another way to ask this is, is this task so boring that it's painful? Number two is volume. Does this happen a lot, either at random times, on demand, or perhaps on a schedule with a deadline? Each of these checkboxes are important, but volume is a big driver. Number four, is this team experiencing pressure, increased workload, or longer hours than usual? Perhaps is it short-staffed or having trouble finding help? Number five is, since there is an element of art and science to this, common sense can help as well. What seems like a solid work item, task, or report to automate? These are the five boxes in our quick win checklist. Are any of your processes coming to mind? Whichever one is top of mind, write it down, and this use case will be worth looking into as a potential quick win candidate. For reference, Our last RPA quick win had a very low financial barrier to entry. It paid for itself entirely in less than three months and is generating an 8x return year over year for this client. Not a bad quick win. 
And you can see how this creates the can we automate this, can we automate that effect. After your first quick win, we move into the second bucket. Intended use for this one is the second bot or the second automation and beyond. I think about it like a rocket ship taking off into space. It needs a rocket to propel it into space. This is your quick win. Then that initial rocket actually separates from the ship and different thrusters are used. Similarly, once you've achieved your quick win, a bit more governance comes into play, and therefore we add a higher level evaluation criteria, which is, does this use case align with your North Star? A relative score of 1 through 10 with regards to alignment to your big why. Is it improving customer experience? How about employee experience? Compliance? Cost and time repurposing? ROI? Whatever your North Star is, ensure that you're prioritizing your next automation with this in mind. So there you go. Two guiding principles in evaluating your next automation. Number one, find the balance between innovation slash experimentation and governance and use evaluation or prioritization criteria. Next, let's review two considerations on top of this. Number one, consider your hyper-automation practices level of maturity. And number two, what hyper-automation tools and capabilities do you have access to and are you ready for? Consideration number one, your hyper-automation team's level of maturity. When determining which automation to build next, one size does not fit all. Take into account what automations have you built to date. If none, then call on guiding principle number one and start with a quick win. Perhaps one RPA bot, one workflow app, or one capture infusion. However, there's also many intermediate to advanced hyper automation shops out there listening. And for these more mature shops, the aperture grows wider with regards to the hyper automation capabilities that can be used. For example, if your more mature hyper automation practice has several bots and workflow apps in production, then perhaps a next automation to build would involve combining these capabilities inside one process. This is the exciting part. As your hyper automation practice matures, you can combine more capabilities that complement each other as long as it's done in a thoughtful manner with proper governance. Consideration number two is a close cousin and perhaps even a function of your team's maturity. What hyper automation tools and capabilities do you have access to? The more advanced your COE becomes, the more tools you should have access to. Do you have a platform that gives you everything from process mapping and mining to RPA and workflow, decision management and capture, or are you just working with an RPA platform? It goes without being said that in evaluating which automation to build next, consider what tools you have access to based on your level of maturity and evaluate accordingly. Let me give an example. If you're just getting started, perhaps your tools are process mapping or modeling and a base RPA platform. This is all you need to get started with your first several automations. But as your quick wins pile up and momentum grows, the business will want more and more. And this is great. You're entering into an intermediate phase of maturity. In this phase, consider adding process mining to investigate a broader breadth of process improvement opportunities, and perhaps even try out a workflow or BPM platform. If done properly, infusing workflow into your business can unlock an entire order of magnitude of value. Now that you're utilizing process modeling, mining, RPA, and workflow in concert with each other successfully, you're ready to take the final step into an advanced practice by utilizing the entire hyper automation toolkit. What creative and meaningful combinations of RPA, workflow, decisions, capture, and content can be designed and developed to unlock the next order of value? This is the fun part and where we see organizations really, truly achieving their North Star. This is where customer experience is optimized, for example. So there you have it. Deciding what to automate next is not as simple as back of napkin ROI. Equipped with these two guiding principles and two considerations, your hyper automation COE will be standing on the shoulders of all early adopters who have paved the way for your success. In conclusion, Guiding principle number one is find the balance between innovation slash experimentation and governance. Guiding principle number two is use evaluation or prioritization criteria. We call this your North Star. Consideration number one is your hyper automation practices level of maturity. And consideration number two 
is which hyper automation tools and combinations of them is appropriate based on this level of maturity. You might be wondering, how on earth can I manage these guiding principles and considerations all in one place? And there's a lot of hyper automation teams out there using many, many tools in a siloed fashion, even manually, tracking use cases for your hyper automation pipeline in Excel, mapping and analyzing processes with a combination of Visio, Word, Excel, or perhaps your RPA vendors automation hub, which exclusively manages RPA use cases. To solve this, we at Salient Process are building the automation compass to guide you along your journey. Currently in beta and available for trial today on our website, link in the description, we encourage you to check it out and see how much it helps bring all of these guiding principles and considerations into one place. And let us know what you think. We'd love more practitioner feedback so that this purpose-built automation compass tool is as effective as it can be. We hope it helps. What automation do I build next? We can't wait to see. Thanks for listening to another episode of Bots and Thoughts, the hyper automation podcast sponsored by Salient Process. Be sure to never miss an episode by hitting that subscribe button wherever you're listening to this. Get your hands on more content like this by following us on LinkedIn and YouTube down in the show notes and say hello. We'd love to hear your thoughts, perhaps even on an upcoming episode. Stay tuned for more episodes of Bots and Thoughts, the hyper automation podcast brought to you by Salient Process.